Hey guys, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to MBBS Treasure Channel. Today we are going to read about the violation of acid base balance. Okay, so let's start our today's topic without wasting time. So friends, we are going to discuss here the violation of acid base balance and what are the pathological conditions that arises due to the violation of the acid and base in our body. So the violation of acid base balance can uh, lead to two types of pathology that is acidosis and alkalosis. So before understanding this acidosis and alkalosis, we should be confirmed or we should know or we should have the knowledge about the acid base and how the balance is occurring inside our body. So then only we can proceed further towards the violation of acid base balance. Okay, so we need to understand first that how the acid and base component in our body is balanced. So first of all, we should know what is this acid base balance. Acid base balance, it is the constancy of maintaining the two types of ions in our body. What are these? First one is the hydrogen ions and second one is the hydroxyl ion. So these two ions should be maintained in our body in order to have a perfect balance between the acid and basic content. So according to this constancy, we are saying that the acid base balance is occurring and it is correlated with the organism's internal environment. It is saying that the internal environment of the organisms should have the well maintained or balanced acid and basic content. So from this, we can say that the normal pH of the blood is around 7.36 to 7.44 and it completely depends on these two ions. One is hydrogen ions and the second one is hydroxyl ion. From our preliminary classes, we already know that, that if the hydrogen ions concentration will increase in our body, it is going to show the acidosis condition and if the hydroxyl ion concentration will increase in our body then we are going to see the condition of alkalosis and these two acidosis and alkalosis are nothing but the pathological condition arises due to the violation of this acid base balance it's simple next what is this buffer so if the changing normally what happens there are certain kinds of physiological changes and pathological changes. When there will be physiological changes, there are certain elements that are present in our body that is regulates or that regulates the normal acid and base changes during respiration or during any kind of metabolism process. There will be certain kind of disorder or disturbance between the acid and base, but it is well maintained by our body. And for the regulation of normal acid base balance, we have a system that is buffer. So next question comes that what is that buffer? It is a maintaining system or it is a system that resists change in pH. Okay, it will not allow to change in pH of the internal environment, whether it is acidic or basic. When the acid content will increase in the body or when the alkali content will increase in the body still this system will regulate to maintain the normal pH okay so this normal pH is going to be maintained by this buffer system and it is having less impact it means the acid or alkali that will be causing the stimulation of this buffer system will be having less impact on this pH of the blood or pH of internal environment. So that is the reason why this buffer is going to maintain the normal pH of the blood. Next, this buffer are divided into two types. It can be according to the chemical structure, it can be chemical buffer and according to different organs function for maintaining the acid and base balance, it can be physiological buffer. So what are these chemical buffer? It can be bicarbonate buffer, phosphate buffer, protein buffer. Okay. More importantly, you have to understand these three that is bicarbonate, phosphate and protein. Next, in physiological buffer, according to the organs that is responsible for most of the excretory process and responsible for maintaining the acidic and basic balance in our body, it can be lungs, kidneys, liver, digestive system and skin. 
Okay, so these are the organs that is responsible for the process of excretion and decreasing the amount of acidic content. Either it can be acidic or basic content. So they need to excrete by the process of proper excretion. They are going to maintain the buffer, uh, maintain the pH, and so they are considered under the physiological buffer. Most importantly, the kidney regulates mostly through three mechanisms that we are going to read in my next slide. What are these? These are acidogenesis, ammonia genesis, and HCO3 bicarbonate reabsorption method. So through these three important mechanisms, the kidney is going to regulate the acid base balance. We will be briefly studying about these two. Now let's focus on the chemical buffer. What are these chemical buffer? As I have said, these chemicals are present inside, inside our body and they are responsible for the changing of the acid and basic content and they are going to physiologically maintain the balance between the acid and base. So what are these chemical buffer? It can be bicarbonate buffer, it can be phosphate buffer and protein buffer. Most important protein buffer that is present inside a cell that is hemoglobin buffer. Next we are going to see the chemical buffer that is the bicarbonate buffer. So first of all we should know this bicarbonate buffer is maintaining the pH at which level of our organs or in our body that is it maintains the constancy of the plasma pH and the extracellular liquid. It means the blood plasma pH and the extracellular fluid will be maintaining or the pH will be maintained by this bicarbonate buffer. This bicarbonate buffer has a specific chemical reaction that we should know that through which mechanism it is going to regulate the acidic and basic content. So you can see these reactions that when this carbon dioxide and water is going to combine with each other at the presence of a specific enzyme. What is that? At the carbonic anhydrase enzyme. So this specific carbonic anhydrase enzyme is going to catalyze the reaction of carbon dioxide and water to form a weak acid that is the carbonic acid. So what happens when there will be increasing in the process of carbon dioxide inside our body due to the reactions of uh, the due to the pathological conditions in our body uh, related with our lungs it could be emphysema it could be chronic obstructive pulmonary disease due to which the carbon dioxide content cannot be exhaled completely from our body that is the reason why the carbon dioxide may increase in our body and that will proceed the reaction in the rightward direction so what will happen this carbonic acid is a weak acid and we, as we know that what do we mean by weak acid weak acid means a uh, acid that will not or uh, that incompletely dissociates in the water it means the this acid will not be completely dissociating in the water and this carbonic acid is going to be further break down into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions so here you can see the bicarbonate component and the hydrogen ions so bicarbonate is the conjugate base of the carbonic acid so th through this method what happens there will be increasing in the production of H plus or hydrogen ions and as we know the hydrogen ions mostly represents the acidic nature that is the reason why we are going to see the acidosis during there will be increasing when there will be increasing the carbon dioxide content okay so this bicarbonate buffer is going to maintain this reactions that if there will be increasing in the acidic content so the reaction will move backward in this backward direction so that is the reason why the here you can see move forward and back reaction sign okay so this reaction is completely unstable according to the changing environment changing situation whether it is alkali or acidic the situation or the reaction is going to move if there will be alkali condition the reaction will move for to increase the acidic content it means to increase the hydrogen ion content and if the situation will be more acidic then what happens to decrease or to maintain or to have the basic nature the reaction will move backward direction so this is the complete mechanism through which the reaction is going to maintain the pH 
and that is the reason why it is known as bicarbonate buffer. Next buffer system that we are going to study is the phosphate buffer. In phosphate buffer, you have to remember one thing that it consists of two phosphate ions. Two phosphate ions are responsible for the maintaining the pH. What are these? It can be monohydrate phosphate ions and dihydrogen phosphate ions. These phosphate ions are present inside the cells. So that is the reason why they are called as the intracellular or the maintaining system of intracellular pH and urine pH regulation that is mostly in the renal tubular fluids. Okay, so these at this point or at these situations they are going to maintain the pH. So the phosphate buffer responsible for the maintaining of the intracellular fluid as they are mostly present inside the cell. This is a cell mostly present inside the cell. So they are going to maintain the intracellular fluid level and this phosphate buffer acts mostly in the renal tubular fluid maintaining pH and this phosphate buffer do not have enzymatic control over the reactions that are followed. So what happens in this bicarbonate buffer, it has a specific enzyme that regulates this reaction that is carbonic anhydrase. And in case of phosphate buffer, there is no enzyme that is going to control these kinds of reactions. And thirdly, what happens? The sodium phosphate, Na2HPO4, this whole uh, chemical structure is present inside the cell. And that, that is the reason why this reaction is going to maintain the pH inside the cell. So it is the intracellular maintaining buffer system. What happens in these reactions? There are two conditions. When there will be increasing in the acidic content, when there will be increasing in the H plus ion. And when there will be decreasing in the acidic content, it means when there will be decreasing in the uh, basic conditions, when there will be development of the basic conditions. So what happens? When there will be acidic condition, this HPO4 2 minus it means the sodium Na2HPO4, uh, uh, this chemical compound is a weak base. Weak base means in presence of hydrogen, it is going to form a bond and it will be producing the NaH2PO4. As I have written this in the ionic form and if it, it will be in a salt form, then it will be producing this NaH2PO4. So what happens here? As you can see, previously there are two sodium ions, but after the process it becomes one sodium ions. And here it was one hydrogen ions and it was and here it becomes two hydrogen ions. So the conversion or when there will be exchange takes place in between the sodium and hydrogen ions, then the buffer reaction is going to maintain the pH. So according to these reactions, whether it is acidic condition or basic condition, it is going to have the exchange in between the sodium and hydrogen ion and that is going to regulate by further dissociation and increasing in the amount of hydrogen ions. Okay, so this two process, as you can see, it's going to maintain the pH and it has a major role in the elimination of hydrogen ions through the kidney. As I have said that this phosphate reactions helpful mostly in the renal tubular fluid. So they are going to maintain the maximum pH constancy at the kidney by exchanging the sodium ion and hydrogen ions and it is essential within the erythrocytes. So this much knowledge you should have about the phosphate buffer. Next we are going to see the protein buffer. What do you mean by protein buffer? The proteins that are present inside the cell are going to act as a buffer. It means they are going to maintain the acid base balance. So this protein buffer, what is most important protein buffer in the erythrocytes? It is the hemoglobin buffer. It constitutes around 30% among all the protein buffer uh, inside the cell. So this protein buffers, these are the plasma proteins like the amphoteric in nature. They are amphoteric. It means they can change their charge to positive or negative. That is the reason why they are known as amphoteric in nature. So they, these amino acids are amphoteric or these proteins are the amphoteric in nature. So that decides according to the given situation, whether it is acid or alkali, they are going to decide that 
we should have more positive charge or we should have more negative charge if positive they need to be uh, stimulated at the time of alkalosis that is the reason why they are going to make have the positive charge and if they are going to have the negative charge it means the condition is already acidic okay so according to the change of the environment whether it is acidic or alkali the amphoteric property of the amino acids or the protein is going to be changed so that is the reason why or how they are going to balance the acid base the most important protein buffer that is the hemoglobin buffer how it regulates the tissue exhales the carbon dioxide and in presence of this uh, carbonic anhydrase enzyme this carbon dioxide and water inside the erythrocyte this process is taking place inside the uh, rbc okay this process is taking place inside the rbc so when the carbon dioxide will be coming inside the rbc with the uh, help of water it, it is going to be converted into the carbonic acid form by this carbonic anhydrase and then the carbonic anhydrase will further be acting on this carbonic acid and will be breaking into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions similarly like in this process but here what happens as the cell contains the hemoglobin the free hydrogen will bind with the hemoglobin forming this hbh plus complex so this hbh plus complex helps us to uh, take the extra amount of h plus ions that are being produced during the condition of acidic violation okay and when there will be increasing in the oxygen content in the rbc so this hbh will be dissociated it means the hemoglobin will be now available for attachment with the oxygen so this is the reaction through which the oxygen and carbon dioxide gets dissociated and they are exchanged in between the tissue and blood okay so these are the reactions of chemical buffer next we are going to see the physiological buffer